Some time ago we tried to create a list of coolers that are able to make your 7700X survive. And another one with coolers that can make a 7700X life livable in some sense. Our approach was pretty interesting I believe. It was basically getting to know how much juice the CPU can pull out of the socket, then send the CPU to always push that amount through the socket and then just let each and every cooler fight against that level of heat and then determine which cooler dies first. The Montec Air 210. It, it uh, died first. However, it wasn't that easy because the number 95 is no longer a hard limit, but it's a target. I don't want to explain the whole thing over and over again, so let's just do a quick recap for those who haven't seen the 7700X cooling video. A Ryzen 7000 chip will always try to get to that 95 degrees C like it's a sick and disgusting obsession. Your cooler will try to push this down as far as it can, either because you are a good boy and you set up a proper PVM curve or because your motherboard forces it too because motherboards and and we share the same opinion um, that everything above 90 degrees is basically the CPU equivalent of heroin. The CPU equivalent of Jesus Christ in form of an AIO would then come to the rescue and try to get the temperature down with some of that holy water. The issue comes because this little chip here was already born with this addiction. So what it does is it just pumps more and more juice into itself until it can skip Sunday church and get back to that 95 degrees C. The bigger problem about all of this is that all of the, the juice the CPU is pumping into itself it is just unnecessary waste or a lot of it. Not only for your electricity bill in this case, but also for your sanity because the fans will inevitably ramp up all the freaking time. So you have basically two possibilities, no, no, three possibilities. You can manually set the max power it can draw without limiting its performance, which would be the most intelligent approach. You can't use a cooler which can just so keep the 7950X from dying and invest half your life savings into a psychotherapy because you will need it after a couple of weeks of fan ramping. Or you can get a cooler which is in fact able to keep the CPU so far away from that 95 degrees C that the hard power limit of your chip will hit before it even gets to that 95. And then further away it gets, the less the fans will start to ramp. In fact, the more I think about it, the more I realize that it's not that different from the way it was before. With Ryzen 5000, 95 was like a very hard limit where we all knew, okay, thermal throttling is coming. And, and now it's kind of the same, just that 95 is not a hard limit, but more like, like a guess. Maybe we are about to thermal throttle, maybe not, or maybe yes, who knows, we will see. Cinebench will tell us. What the hell? But if you don't want to live in a limbo, we have a weird ass approach. We determined how much power a 7950X can draw without limits, then we forced it with some good old spanking to always push that amount, and then we tried each and every cooler, and the ones that survived this state will also survive the regular and unchained 7950X, maybe just barely with all of the fan spinning at max speed, but they will survive it. And to give you a heads up, the list is not very long. Before we begin, the number is 225 watts. Our 7950X, without any limits, was pulling 225 watts through the socket. Oh good lord. Starting off with an Arctic Liquid Freezer 420. Yay, it survived. 87.5 degrees C. <laughs> Um, to make it clear, those numbers are normalized to a 25 degrees C room. While doing our testing, we had about 26.9. So the biggest and thickest AIO available on the market was able to keep a CPU at 94.4 degrees C in reality. Let that sink in. Great start. Keeping it normalized for a 20 degrees C room, the Liquid Freezer 360 also managed to pull it off at 93.6 degrees C, with all the ones in between managing to do the same, a bit lower, but they did it. But then the first problem arrived, the Arctic Liquid Freezer 240. On here, the temperature rose, and it rose 4, 97.8 degrees C, to 4. So here we already have it, the list is done. We have our freaking limit, this, for the 7950, it's basically 360 or 420 millimeters AIOs, or straight custom water loop. Now again, this list doesn't mean that if you would, for example, take an Arctic Liquid Freezer 280, this wouldn't mean that the CPU will thermal throttle, and that is due to the CPU pumping itself full of power, unnecessarily. But it only means that because the last 10-20 watts are just waste. 
but this also means that if you would take a liquid freezer to 40, your CPU will try to, to, to fix itself somewhere in the range of 95 degrees C. But while doing so, your fans will go off like crazy and you, you can do nothing about it. You can get software which will limit it and force the motherboard to ignore every setting. Sure, you can do that, but that's not really the right approach. So the will it survive list actually goes a bit further down and includes things like the Nokia NHD 15. This one will work fine, but the fans will go into enrage and, and it's amazing. So we are back to two lists. This one is plus minus what will keep a 7950X from actually thermal throttling, but be prepared that the lower ones will let it sit around 95 degrees C all the freaking time. And then we have this list, the what you should get list. And the further up you go, the less your fans will spin because power limit hits before you can even reach 95 degrees C. Or to make it short, get yourself a liquid freezer for 20. From my own standpoint, that would be the only thing I would consider for, in my case, to combine with the CPU. Anything else would annoy the hell out of me. On a side note, we actually tried the NHD15 while forcing those 225 watts through it. What I learned while doing so is that the chip actually never thermal throttles, um, which I find weird because a Ryzen 5000 chip will thermal throttle after 95 degrees C, even if you set the ratio and voltage manually to whatever, after 95 it will limit it down. Um, but not the 7950X, no, this one just went right through it and hit exactly 108.5, a, and then Blop. <laughs> the complete system shut down. Uh, upon reboot, the motherboard threw a F3 error, which um, funnily enough is just marked as being reserved in the manual, so uh, that one was very fun. But after a CMOS reset, everything started up again perfectly fine. But hey, now we know forcing juice through a 7950X doesn't allow it to thermal throttle. It will just heat itself until it just shuts down, which, yeah, things we've learned. So yeah, you can go with the will survive list and you can absolutely expect the CPU to perform fine, but the fans will be uncontrollable because your motherboard tries to read out CPU temp and, it, and the CPU tries to be at 95 and it's a, a nice combination of that doesn't make a lot of sense. Now we would recommend this list, which is basically get yourself the fattest, biggest AIO you can get or learn how to bend tubes and then you will have some level of control. Okay, on that note, I guess this was it for today. I hope this was helpful, but if you want to continue watching, have a look at our take on the 7950X. Thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.